One, two, three, three. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Dave and Jay's Power Bomb, September 30th in 2020. And we just watched AEW Dynamite. And what a fine night of many battles. We had Return of Legends. Oh. Yeah, Holy, so yeah. we're just going to jump right into it here. Uh, September 30th, we got Ricky Starks. He's facing Darby Allen. That's how they opened the night. That match has been hotly anticipated. Seems like Ricky's been uh, doing most of the feud and Darby hasn't yeah, been yeah. showing Darby, up. Darby hasn't done jack shit. He like, does a little black and white thing, but no, man. Ricky's really has been carrying it on, and Ricky Stark is a very charismatic uh, wrestler, I gotta say. He's holding it. Yeah, he He's came a huge down fan. with a body bag made especially for Darby Allen. Then Darby had another black and white vignette. It was from Skateboard Guy talking about how hard Darby Allen is. Ben Moff, J. Ben Mafia. Uh, and then, yeah, so they're going into it. Uh, one of those guys delivers a crazy suplex on the ring apron, hardest part of the ring. And then Brian Cage is going to interfere, but then he yeah, gets saved. Like good old yeah. Will Power. Because yeah. he is Will Hobbs. Yeah. But he's got Will Power. AEW, dark <laughs> favorite of ours. He's uh, he making is, his man. way up to the main roster on there here on Dynamite. And um, then we got an arm drag takedown from the apron all the way onto the floor. Devastating. How's Darby going to come back from this one? And then he's able to hit that not Canadian destroyer, the Code Red. Yeah. He hits that. <coughs> Pardon me. And then um, they have an... Yeah, what else does he do? Oh, yeah. Then Darby has uh, Ricky Starks into an arm bar. And Ricky Starks trying to get to the rope. And then he hooks it into a double arm bar. But Ricky Starks is able to escape. And then... Um, oh, shoot. And then uh, fucking... <laughs> Darby comes off the uh, top rope springboard and Ricky Starks is able to catch him with a spear. That was pretty crazy. Yeah, that was actually some really awesome mid-action. I was just like, whoa! Yeah, Ricky Starks has something to prove and uh, Taz is on commentary for that one, unfortunately. The whole night, actually. And then, uh, so Ricky Starks is looking to close things off. He's going for that Rochambeau. He's on that top rope. Darby's able to reverse it. Ricky Starks gets knocked off the top rope. Darby hits the coffin drop. <laughs> And then uh, one, two, three, Darby Allen, I guess, wins this feud against Ricky Starks. So, who you got a feud with next? What does the future hold for both these men? Only time will tell. So then, um, oh shit, Cody, Cody comes out. They're playing his music. Cody comes out. It's crazy. Is he going to accept the dog collar challenge? That's the big question, right? He was accepted to a dog, I challenged to a dog collar match by Brody Lee last week. So then he's in the middle of the ring with Tasha Gonzalez. They're talking. And uh, Cody had some poignant words of note. He was saying he was trained by Al Snow. And Al Snow told him, you can always wrestle hurt, but never wrestle injured. And you know, Brody Lee like injured Cody psychologically as well uh, last week, or five, six weeks ago now. Yeah. And uh, I might just walk off for a bit and let Jay handle this. I don't know what's going on. So Cody was totally not going to do it because you know what, Noy? The Nightmare Family, the frat boy, not going to be able to challenge Who is it? this Dark Order whoa, rascalian whoa, 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 whoa. speaking of such dark nightmare family issues? Tis his eye, dashing Davy Rhodes. And I have a thing or two to say on this whole Brody Lee Dark Order situation. You try <laughs> to choke out my alcoholic wife? You send one of your thirst trap minions after my thirst trap? That's not cool. That's not cool at all. Wow, first time I'm really shocked. Dashing Cody Rhodes. Davy Rhodes. Out. Wow. So, yeah, Cody's accepting the match, man. I'm kind of a little bit blown away by what just happened. What did I miss, man? You're talking shit about Cody for a second? I had to walk off? Got, What's going on? I got scared. Scared? What's it scared about, man? What happened in this match that you oh, were talking well, shit Brody about? Lee scares me sometimes. Oh, okay, yeah. So what did they do? Oh, yeah, so they need each other, right? That's why they shake hands in the back, because they, they need they do need each other. Yeah. They, uh, they, need, like, they need each other not to drop each other under heads and stuff, for sure. A lot of trust. And then uh, it's the 213 call from the area code. The 213, Cody 
gets the big Hollywood call. He's hobnobbing with Rosario Dawson and this and that. And then um, he's asking himself like uh, metaphysical questions here. He must have been doing some ayahuasca of uh, Rosario. He's like, who am I? <laughs> and so he's feeling bad the five weeks hosting the Cody Big Time show. And uh, he's like, they're asking him, why aren't you one of the aces anymore, Cody? And he goes down the list. We got three aces, Hikiro Shida, um, I guess FTR, and uh, Brody Lee. Yeah. And Brody Lee. So Cody's not on that list. And uh, he's looking at the optics. Is he going to answer the challenge? Yes or no? The answer is no. Cody's not going to answer this dog collar challenge. It's, I don't blame him. It's it's too much. You, you got to know when to draw a line. Dog collars is enough. But then um, Cody comes back and he's like, I didn't say no. I said no regrets. So it's on, man. Dog collar challenge next week. And Brody Lee comes down and they're going at it. It's crazy. Oh Tooth and God. nail. They need it's separation. Just, the everybody locker just room comes clears out. out. Yeah, it's like a both brawl. Gun everybody. Sons of the Billy Gun everybody. Club. All everybody the, that was the there shit show. That, that's on the payroll yeah. was fighting out there. Yeah. It was awesome. And Tony Khan might have been out there in a dark order mask trying to separate I these know. two. Like, who knows, man? It was, so, it was so chaotic. Like, as soon as you thought it was broken up again, no. Like, it was Brody yeah. Lee was like, ah! Then Brandy gets out there and jumps off the top rope and jumps, does a flip on top of the entire dark order. Then yeah. Anna Jay has to get out there. She's looking to get it on and Brandy's getting it on and then Ty Connie has to separate him. It's like getting crazy, right? Man. And then um, Brody Lee storms back in again and everyone's got to come in to restore order and then Brody Lee comes in again and shit's crazy. And then they just had to go to a commercial and you know Putting wow, the dog collars on next week, motherfuckers. Yeah, next week's going to be fucking lit. It's going to be yeah, insanity. <laughs> So then we got backstage, Tony Schiavone, <laughs> he's interviewing FTR, and uh, there's a full gear pay-per-view. I think they said November 27th, but then I thought I heard November 7th, so look in the description bar below, I'll keep you, in we'll both keep you informed of that. Yeah. And uh, so then, um, yeah, they're telly talking shit, and then uh, one of the Jackson brothers, the Young Bucks come out there out of nowhere, and boom, nail that super kick on Schiavone. Oh, it's wow. crazy, it was right? Like a foot apart from my face. Ah. Fast. Like, Giovanni, he totally got rocked. We, nobody yeah. was expecting that. <laughs> it was Just nuts. Nowhere, it was man. nuts. Nobody was expecting that. I'm going to get that super kick down one of these days. It's a lot of control. A lot of cardio and shit, you know? All right. So then we got SCU. They got words. They're doing that 20-minute taste of brush of greatness match with FTR. 20-minute time limit. And then Sean Spears is jerking the curtain back there, wishing him luck. He's like, oh, good luck, guys. And they're like, oh, what does that mean? Holy shit. Yeah. So then, all right, it's windy out here, guys. Bear with us. This is not a green screen. So yeah, we got the big AEW Tag Team Championship match, 20 minute time limit, a brush of greatness match. SCU's coming out there, Christopher Daniels, then FTR's out there, Tully. We got Adam Page, Hangman Adam Page, doing the color commentary. Uh, okay, yeah. He's getting a sip on. Yeah, the color commentary is more like a gin blossom and full <laughs> yeah. bloom going on. They almost make our job too easy with the screen caps. We're going to have lots of screen caps of him yeah. getting the sip on. This is about as easy as making fun of the presidential debate. Uh, I didn't watch it, man, but uh, it affected There's the price of, of BitTorrent. Yeah. yeah, so BitTorrent went up. Nothing else did. Nobody That's what I had my eye on. on this audience. Yeah, <laughs> true. Okay, so... So, what did I do? <laughs> so, yeah, so we got the leg sweep fake out uh, during the match. Uh, and uh, one of the FTR guys pretends to get tripped by Christopher Daniels. And I thought Christopher Daniels did trip. I'm like, oh, he's a yeah, pro. I, I didn't know. even see that. But then uh, the ref thinks that he did it for real. And Chris Daniels, you're out of there. Yeah, it was kind of, somebody commented, it was like, FTR, they're a matter of manipulating their opponents. And even sometimes the referee, mm, barbecue sauce. Barbecue sauce. <laughs> and then uh, as Christopher Daniels is getting ejected, Hangman's like, yeah, go back there, get me another drink. <laughs> and then, um, so then SCU's able to draw him in. Kazarian hits one of those guys, and then both FTR start chasing him outside the ring, and then Scorpio Sky's able to do that dive move over the top rope and nail him. I wish he would have nailed Tully, too. And then, um, what do they do? Uh, 
Oh yeah, and then they got this pin. SCU has it won. There's new champions, yeah, right? They won. They yeah. had the, they had it seven count yeah. pretty well, man. The rest back was turned. He was tied up with one of those oh, FTR yeah. guys, and uh, they were able to kick out after seven or eight seconds. Um, they hit uh, Kazarian hits a double pin suplex move. That looked pretty cool. And then both the uh, SCU guys were able to hit double springboard cutters, which were actually cool. And then um, they're going for yeah, there's some weird top rope power bomb counter. It looked, it looked weird. We'll have a picture of it up there for you. It was weird. And then um, there's multiple pinfall attempts. Like I think Scorpio Sky does that lazy man pin that Orange Cassidy employs, and they just went for a bunch of one twos near near falls. And then, uh, yeah, at the end of the match, um, Tully hooks uh, Scorpio Sky's legs as he's, like, reversing a suplex. So it's like a dirty pin. So Tully's got the guy's ankle hooked on the apron. And then the other FTR comes and holds Tully for extra leverage so the other guy can't kick out. And FTR are able to retain their uh, AEW Tag Team Championships. Okay. <coughs> Woo! And then, well... Illegitimate champs. Well, this is happening. Uh, they dropped some knowledge on us. There's a uh, tournament going on. I think it's a four-man tournament for the number one contender spot for uh, the AEW Championship. And I guess that'll happen at full gear, that match. And Kenny Omega's in the tournament. And uh, I think Adam Hangman Page is not. No. Nope. Uh, but Kenny he was Omega upset is. Because they're like, oh my God, we're not tag team partners anymore. Yeah, didn't you get the memo, Hangman? Holy shit. And Kenny right. hasn't had a singles match in like four weeks. In four stupor. weeks now, though. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't get four right on my fingers. And um, so then, oh, what do we got? Uh, young and plucky Isaiah Cassidy of uh, Private Party fame. It's coming down there, Matt Hardy and Mark Quinn. And Le Champion, he's got the entire inner circle with him. Hagar, Guevara, Santana, Ortiz, Judas Singalongs in full effect. This is, a cre this, this is really good. So what were some things of notes here? Oh yeah, and during this match they let us know next week we're having a 30 years of Le Champion Chris Jericho celebration. Can't wait for that. It's going to be sick. And uh, so yeah, Isaiah Cassidy's coming in hot early. Too hot. Le Champion, he's a pro. He's just letting this kid burn himself out, right? Yeah. So he's coming in. And then he's shut down by Jericho a bit. Oh, <laughs> a favorite of Jay's and no one's. <laughs> the Chaos Project. <laughs> Okay. They decide they're gonna get involved. I think Jericho gets thrown over the railing, and then the Chaos Project are like there, and they start giving him the beats a little bit. I yeah, didn't like Luther it. Luther kind of gets in the way. Luther and, then they and just kind of like Serpentico. Start going out. <laughs> yeah, is it Serpentico or Serpentico. Is it Sammy. I don't know, man. They do look they alike, know, man. Yeah. They do look alike. I'm not gonna lie. And uh, so then uh, that enables, uh, yeah, uh, Cassidy to hit a swanton bomb. Not enough. Uh, he goes off the springboard uh, top rope, flipping stunner. Uh, and then uh, Jericho goes through the lion salt. Isaiah Cassidy reverses the knees, does a lion salt of his own. I didn't like seeing that. And uh, then he hits the code breaker on Jericho. I definitely didn't like seeing that. Uh, I think that was a near fall. And then he's like going, I'm going to do another springboard. And then, oh, boom, into a Judas effect. effect. One, One, two, two three, down to 100. Over. Yeah. And then immediately, 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 like no time to breathe. The beat down and powerful, happens. Just going yeah. on in there, yeah. in there. And then so there's a big beat down. Yeah, um, eventually Matt comes out with a chair. Everybody gets scared off and they all talk shit to each other. Like, but then, you suck. But then suck, Jericho and Hagar, they still have a score to settle. They go right after the Chaos Project. Yeah. They're just like, dragging them over to railing. They want to get themselves some. And, and who was saying, I can't wait till so, so, somebody gets their AEW Dynamite debut. This is their shot, man. Get, the, get enough wins on dark, get the job on dynamite. So, a big job opportunity for them, it seems. And then Miro, is, it's weird. They had a video game arcade, him and Kid Sabian. Yeah, that, 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 the whole Kid Sabian little developing the best man thing, that's just getting kind of yeah. weird. Where you start going with it? You Twi bring out this, Twitch like, God, Kid Sabian. But uh, yeah, it wasn't the bachelor party. They're planning it. And then, yeah, and then Miro's playing a video game and some old weird dude sits down beside him and yeah. he's like wants to let him this, know. This is just weird. Can we yeah. just move on from yes. this one? Okay, yes. thank you. That's, it's like the whole kid stage is like awesome and all because Penelope but otherwise that's just weird. <laughs> so then we're backstage with the best friends and they're being interviewed by Tasha Gonzalez and they're talking about I guess their upcoming uh, title shot at Full Gear for the Tag Team Championships. They're interrupted by FTR. But then um, what happens? F yeah, best friends make FTR flinch, and then yeah. Orange Cassidy calls like, him weenies. weenies. Yeah. And JR's like, are we allowed to say weenies on TV? 
Why? Because you didn't mention barbecue sauce. I got some barbecue sauce to dip those weenies in. potato. (laughs) (laughs) So then we got Orange Cassidy with the best friends. He's having a match against uh, number 10 with the Dark Order. And he's out there with a few Dark Order members. I mean, shit really popped off with Brody Lee and the rest of them earlier, right? So he's out there. I think Colt's out there. He's got Silver out there with him. Uh, they're, yeah, and then they're mocking him. Ten grabs the sunglasses and puts them on silver, <laughs> yeah. and the silver starts just like acting all super oh, excited. And this then, was definitely a very entertaining <laughs> match, big time. Yeah, and then yeah, Ten's like showing some uh, personality. He's mocking uh, best uh, Cole Cat, Cole, Cole, He's mocking Orange Cassidy with the hands in the pockets and that stuff. And then um, he, then they get outside the ring, and him and Silver do the best friends yeah, spot. Cool, the oh. just like, oh. And then they zoom out and do it proper. So they're really getting under the best friends and Cole Cabana's yeah. skin at this point. And um, so then, best friends in Orange Cassidy skin, whatever. So then Cassidy uh, jumps on top of all of them from the top rope outside the ring. He hits that DDT move on number 10. And then um, he hits the orange punch. And he's got a new finisher. He's kind of got the guy up like this, like he's going to hit him with a back body drop, but he holds it. And then he just drops down. The guy lands on his head. Yeah. It's pretty impressive. It's pretty impressive. So he wins with the pin. And then we cut to MJF. And he's in the inner circle's uh, locker room. He's accompanied by Wardlow. And he's got gifts. Gifts for almost all of the boys. Everybody, I got a sick but... jacket for you, Jake. And I got a sick jacket for you, Ortiz. And you, Santana. Oh, and I can't forget about Chris. Oh, what about Sammy? Aww. Aww. It's not how you treat a Spanish sex god. No. Free Sammy. Free We're the Sammy. leaders of the Free Sammy movement. Damn That's right. undeniable. They're the ones that brought Sammy Guevara back. That's right. It's four weeks of hell, but yeah, then we brought him back. Fake news. We were, it was not fake at all, man. <laughs> no, we campaigned we hard. Yeah. So then, uh, yeah. <laughs> What are they saying? Oh, yeah. So Chris is like, yeah, like, this, this jacket's sick. Like, thank you. But, like, I asked you, like, you know, almost a year ago, like, do you want to join the Dark Order? And then MJF's inner like, Inner Circle. Or, yeah. <laughs> join oh, the Dark geez. Order. Yeah, do you want to join the Inner Circle? And then MJF's like, I don't know, Chris, do you want me to join the Inner Circle? It's like, do you want to join the Inner Circle? Do you want me to join the Inner Circle? Blah, blah, blah. So they keep going on. And then at the end, when MJF leaves, Sammy's like, what a loser. And then Le Champion's like, Perhaps not. Hmm. Maybe MJF's working with Champion the way he worked Cody, right? Yeah. He worked Cody hard, man. Like Cody thought he like MJF was his best friend and shit. Cody, I remember like I was trying to warn Cody when we first started our show. I, he wouldn't answer my Twitter and shit. Like Cody, like, but now I'm in the frat house and it's all cool. I buy Cody his hair dye. I'm in. So then, um, what do we got? Um, oh yeah, 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 yeah. We got Doctor Britt Baker, her triumphant return. dynamite return. She's going up against some jobber named Red Velvet. Britt Baker's got Reba with her. Britt Baker hits a vicious throat chop. Like it's crazy. Um, she hits a super kick into a swinging fisherman suplex and then she's got a new finishing move she she just runs up and like stomps the chick like a curb stomp like it's crazy right yeah, so then she gets the pin yeah it is a pretty good one, match one two three Britt Baker's yeah back. Britt Baker's looking good man she's looking tight like body's on point she's been making the most out of her sabbatical that's for sure yeah no wardrobe malfunction that's the news yeah uh, oh. definitely Definitely no wardrobe malfunction. I don't know what Jay's talking about. So then uh, we got a post-match beatdown. Britt Baker reasserting her dominance on the women's division. She's number five ranked. Had only wrestled one match within the past four months. But I guess getting shot in the leg of that Novocaine or whatever it was at the last pay-per-view really helped move her up into rankings. Yeah. So she hits that lockjaw move, the submission to fingers down the throat, and she makes an emphatic statement. So then uh, we got some matches from next week yes uh, as jay predicted we got jericho and hagar going up against both the only members of the chaos project serpentico yep. and luther the japanese death match sensation luther so then what do we oh and then we have an ftw championship match you want to talk fake championships fake news this ftw fake championship it's being defended by brian cage and he's going up against good old will hobson. willpower will hobson it's gonna be awesome it was gonna be sick we're going man. for will hobson man. Yeah. Ah, we're going will for hobson. will hobson you ftw sure. fake champ yeah uh, Brian Cage is gonna win, but I'm going. We got Will Hobbs in our heart, <laughs> so and we got the dog collar match. Least we forget, we had the dog collar match 
enter the TNT Championship yeah. next week. You don't want to miss that. Brody Lee versus Cody. Okay. So are we at the main event here now? We are at the main event. We have this match so fucked. So Eddie Kingston gets to pick John Moxley's opponent for an AEW championship title match tonight right now because I guess Eddie Kingston didn't tap out last week. He just passed out unconscious. So that gets him a second championship opportunity. He turned this one down. He wasn't feeling it. So instead of giving it to um, Pentagon Jr. or Ray Phoenix or the Blade, who does he give it to? The giant butcher. Like, are you fucking kidding me? He gets the title shot? Like, I've been preaching for months, give it to Ray Phoenix. Like, holy shit. So what happened? Do we have a new champion tonight? Let's find out. All right, so... Um, yeah, Eddie Kingston has some words to the referee or something. Apparently, they got some personal history. Jay's hot neighbor brought over some cake, so I was really into that. So I wasn't really paying attention to the personal history between Kingston and the ref. And then um, no, what happened here? Either. And then, yeah, so Moxley comes to the ring. He's got a barbed wire bat. And then um, they're wrestling around, rolling around. Nothing they're doing the wrist special, action, yeah. they're touching each other's legs, <laughs> working Moxley's knee. Working that knee, man. Yeah, Moxley's knee got his problems. knee worked up. Like, There's some knee problems going like, on. Ah. Just keep going, Dave. All right, so oh, Moxley's no. got some knee problems, but then he throws the butcher into the railing there. He kind of sidesteps him. And then... Um, what does he do? He's got he hits that pile driver on Big Butch, and then um, he's on that uh, Butcher hits a second rope cross body, but then uh, Moxley's able to hit a DDT. I wasn't sure if it was a paradigm shift. I don't know if it's still banned or not, but he hits that bulldog choke and uh, yeah, it's a Butcher submission. And I don't yeah maybe Butcher tapped or maybe he didn't tap. I don't know, but. Moxley gets his hand raised. Another second successful title defense by nobody's favorite AEW champion, Jonathan No Good Moxley. What? So, since the show's over now, I got a confession. I watched a whole bunch of other company stuff this week. Oh my god, man, that's awful. And it's my attack phase this week. Well, it's yours, but I'm making it mine. Ah! Never watch other company again! Oh.